reduce, reuse, recycle. When it comes to dealing with food packaging waste, it's that simple, right? Join me in the fourth episode of the Unwrapping Food Packaging video blog to learn more. Welcome. My name is Jane Monker and I'm the Managing Director of the Food Packaging Forum. Today we're taking a closer look at the end of life of food packaging. So when food packaging becomes waste, specifically we will discuss why simply recycling all packaging is not necessarily a silver bullet solution and also what we need to consider when thinking about reducing and reusing food packaging. And we'll also take a closer look at today's food systems and their use of food packaging. But let's take it step by step. So let's start by looking at the functions of food packaging. Why do we actually need food packaging? It all began when humans came out of caves and started to farm. The Neolithic revolution was just that, a revolution in the way that humanity fed itself. And it also allowed humans to focus on things other than their food supply. The previous hunter and gatherer societies didn't store food. They roamed their natural habitat and ate what they could find. And they spent almost their entire working time doing just that, getting food. But with the Neolithic revolution, humans started to farm and farming really changed the game. Suddenly there was excess food at certain times of the year and that produce could be stored so that enough food was available outside of harvesting season or during a bad year. The first food containers were very basic. Think of clay pots and wooden barrels and they were used mostly to store foodstuffs. At the same time, techniques to preserve food were developed, such as drying, smoking, salting, and fermenting like cheese, wine, or sauerkraut. But then a major disruption happened in the 19th century when Frenchman Nicolas Appert invented a method for preserving all kinds of food stuff. By enclosing food in hermetically sealed containers, Appert could preserve even foods like fresh vegetables, fresh fruit juices, and so industrial scale food packaging was born. And together with the development of coal or oil powered machines to do human work, a new lifestyle emerged where food production did not have to be front and center of human activity. Since then, humanity has come a very long way. The way that society produces and consumes food today has become much more industrialized, much more efficient and more economically profitable. And so the functionality of food packaging has also changed massively. Initially, food packaging had to enable long-term storage by keeping pests out and preventing spoilage. As food production changed and became more industrialized, additional functions for food packaging emerged, such as preserving the texture and flavor of foods by keeping moisture, oxygen, and light out, keeping the fizz, the carbon dioxide, in, in products like sodas, and also important for the newly emerging economy for advertising the products. But for today's food packaging, functionality is far more complex and sophisticated. In addition to all the old requirements, it must now also serve different purposes, such as to convey information to consumers, to enable convenience, to enable consumer experience when you open the packaging, for example. When you hear a sound while opening the food products packaging, you then associate that sound with consuming that specific product. And that sensory experience directly taps into your brain function. But modern food packaging also, and importantly, enables business models such as centralized high throughput food production and retail. Think of today's supermarkets. And modern food packaging makes the food product traceable in a globalized economy. And basically it makes complex global supply chains work. So, in short, modern food packaging is far more than just a means to store food throughout the year to keep them safe and to advertise brands. Modern food packaging is a highly engineered product that is intricately connected to the food industry and ultimately it is part of the food product itself. Food packaging is, in fact, 
a symbol of how humanity has evolved and of how our human culture has changed over the centuries. As such, today's food packaging has become an enabler of the modern lifestyle, where most of us no longer dedicate most of our working hours to food procurement and food production. And also in most countries, people spend less and less time for cooking their own food. It's interesting that the overall role that food packaging plays as an enabler of a globalized food system is hardly ever addressed. Everyday consumers use food packaging without being aware of all its functions, some of which are highly complex. But today, when we speak about food packaging, we often only think about it when it comes to its end of life, when food packaging becomes waste, when it's littered and pollutes the environment. So I think that we must start to acknowledge that food packaging is indeed an enabler of our modern way of life and of the entire food economy today. And in my opinion, this means that society needs to discuss how we want to produce and consume foods while also simultaneously discussing the role of food packaging in the whole food system. Without cheap single-use food packaging, many food products today would simply not be economically viable. But we also cannot ignore the detrimental impacts of this type of food packaging on the environment and also on human health. So this means that discussions about food packaging and importantly discussions about reducing waste from food packaging cannot happen in isolation. These discussions must consider how today's food supply as a whole works and factor in all possible environmental and human health impacts of food packaging. So what about the circular economy? What about recycling? What about using less plastic and using more paper or fiber-based materials or even bioplastics? Plastics and paper have the benefit of being lightweight and so they're better for shipping around across long distances. But when it comes to the end of life, it's really important to understand that not all materials can be recycled in the true sense of turning a food container into a new food container. For most, if not all materials, you will have to blend in virgin material. That is, you will have to have newly made plastic or paper to mix with your recycle content so that you can maintain the material properties. Important exemptions are glass and metals, which are so-called permanent materials. They can be endlessly recycled without losing their material properties. So here you really can turn a glass bottle into a new glass bottle. But you have to invest a lot of energy into remelting the material, which is not good in terms of reducing CO2 emissions, of course. And actually, the circular economy is about more than recycling. It really is about reducing materials, minimizing energy loss from the economy. And so both of these are best achieved by avoiding or by reusing food packaging. Recycling is the less favorable option and this actually also includes biodegradation. Recovery then is of even lower priority. So this corresponds to thermal valorization of waste or incineration uh, where the energy is then recovered. And then of course, you also must pay attention to chemical contaminants, which can be higher in recycled materials. Especially this is the case in paper packaging, but also some types of plastics and bioplastics also, because these materials are not inert and can lead to higher migration, but also absorb chemicals, which then accumulate during recycling and are present in the recycled material. If you want to learn more about this topic of recycling, I invite you to take a look at our food packaging form fact sheets on materials for food contact and recycling. And here you can easily see for yourself what the material properties are for the different food packaging types and also how recycling those packaging types works in theory based on the material properties. And we're working on a new fact sheet about bioplastics, so keep an eye out for that too. But of course, bear in mind that at the end of the day, to be recyclable also always means that a certain material of packaging or packaging type is actually collected where it becomes waste and also that it is sorted and then indeed used to make something new out of it. Recycling will not happen where this infrastructure is locally not available when packaging becomes waste or where there is no market for recycled materials because 
For example, the virgin material is just so much cheaper. So waste management essentially becomes a very local issue with huge differences across the globe. And with some rich countries, even shipping their waste off to other less affluent countries to recycle or to just deal with it. And most often this leads to adverse environmental and human health impacts. So this in turn means that focusing just on increasing the recycled content of food packaging will not solve the overall issue of packaging waste, namely the destruction of our planet's natural resources and with it the destruction, quite frankly, of humanity's livelihood. More recycled content also means there is a high probability that people will get exposed to more, not less, hazardous chemicals, which can accumulate in most recycled materials. And so recycling becomes a fig leaf for continuing overproduction of food and for mindless consumption that are ultimately centered on convenience and, and highly profitable globalized business models. So here's my opinion. For a globalized economy, there really is no silver bullet solution for preventing plastic pollution and at the same time, continuing with business as usual in food production, distribution and retail. The complexity of the system is simply too high. Just think about the diversity of local waste management and all the requirements for hyper-functional yet cheap food packaging in today's globalized business models. So this means that instead of changing just the packaging materials, companies really need to actually change the business models which use these packaging materials. In a way, it probably means going back to more local food production and consumption of less processed foods, cooking yourself and so on. And the local food should be packaged with inert materials that have low chemical migration, such as glass and stainless steel that can be reused many, many times. And packaging waste also becomes less of an issue because you are not shipping products around the globe. Right now, the world gathers for the United Nations Food System Summit, and there's increasing awareness for the role of food production in the destruction of humanity's natural habitat. This is the time now to factor in the role of food packaging as an enabler of our modern way of life, and to talk about it while discussing how we need to change our food systems as a whole to be more sustainable and healthy, and how we can, together, work towards an energy and resource efficient circular and regenerative economy. And of course, we need food packaging. After all, food packaging is highly useful for protecting and storing foods. But when you are selecting the appropriate food packaging, I suggest that you consider the packaging as such, not only as an end of life challenge and see it as part of your product, which can then enable a truly more sustainable business model. So this means that you already think about food packaging and all of its adverse impacts on the environment during the early stages of your business model development. So it means that you should consider aspects like CO2 emissions and the packaging's end of life, which are very important, of course, but also at the same time factor in other impacts of equal importance. So what are these other impacts and which is then the best type of food packaging or food container for both human health and the environment? Indeed, this can be really challenging to figure out. At the end of the day, it will depend on many factors, such as the food stuff and your ambitions for a more healthy and sustainable business model. We at the Food Packaging Forum have been working on this very challenge together with a diverse multi-stakeholder group. We're developing a free online tool called the Understanding Packaging Scorecard. And this tool allows you to compare different container options in the food service industry for their most important impacts on the environment and human health. And these most important impacts, in our opinion, are, of course, the impact on climate, the use of fresh water, the sustainable sourcing of raw materials, the end of life, plastic pollution and Importantly, the presence of hazardous chemicals, also known as chemicals of concern, in your containers. If you're interested, please check out our better version of the tool, which is available on the Understanding Packaging Scorecard website. 
and we'll dedicate one of the next episodes of the Unwrapping Food Packaging video blog to dive more deeply into this novel tool. So for now, thank you for your interest in this topic. Um, if you'd like to follow our work, please subscribe to the Unwrapping video blog and also to our other social media accounts. And please also check out our website at foodpackagingforum.org for news and updates on everything about food packaging, chemical safety and environmental impacts of food packaging. And we also have an annual workshop that may be of interest to you to participate in. I really look forward to welcoming you there. Please also check out the links below and also visit our website for more information. So that's all for today. Take care and bye for now.